This is a little refresher for some of our new volunteers. So I'm going to be running over some of the basics that we've learned on our course with a focus on otter sprain, Facebook for otters, otter poo, and otter footprints. When we're looking for otter sprain, we're looking for features, features that an otter might use to be able to spread its message. The otter wants it to be found. So you'd be thinking of things like boulders in the rivers, overhanging branches and trees, even under bridges, conferences of water where watercourses join, anything that's distinguishing. So when you're doing your survey, look down the watercourse and look at what points, if you were an otter, that you'd go and put your sprains on. And that's got the most chance of other otters being able to find it. We've got to remember one of the most important ways of being able to identify it is through its smell. So we need to be able to try and smell it and you're looking for that fishy, musky, slightly sweet, some people say a bit like a muddy jasmine tea kind of smell, but this is a key way to know that you've got otter and not another mustelid or an, another animal that's similar. Please remember that otter sprain is faeces, so either wear gloves when you're handling it, take some tweezers with you, or in many cases, I just pick up a nearby leaf and use that to pick it up and smell it. If you want to take some otter sprain, please remember only take about a third of it because it's there for a reason to communicate with other otters. So sandbanks like these, particularly after heavy rain or the river's been high and the river's washed out, leave a bit of a blank canvas for any otter activity. So as I'm looking here, I can already see there's multiple footprints coming up and down as the otter's going there. But here, we have some really fresh otter sprain, and this is a bit of a sand castle. So the otters dug this together and then sprained it on the top. And the reason for that is to get, lift the smell of the sprain so that it travels more. So then the, the, this message, this important message to other otters has more chance of being detected. But there are footprints there, 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 there's even looks like another sand castle there. Beautiful footprint here. Multiple sprints here. One, two, three, four. There. Here. Footprints. So this is more than one otter. So I, I, th I, would, I would estimate that there are, there are three otters in the area that we know about. I think this is the three of them. They've all come up. Um, and you can see the trail leads down there. So they come up out the water, sprinting, leave their messages. And um, yeah, just there, more footprints. Lovely examples. It's littered with footprints. So there must have been a mini otter party here, which is really good. Now, the one thing I'm gonna try and be really careful of is not leaving my own footprints here so then other people see them and think what's down there. So as I'm moving around, I'm just going to try and, and um, just not leave the indentations of my boots. And then there's kind of shuffling, focusing, more footprints coming this way and then heading off down under there. So what's um, quite interesting about otter sprain, with lots of it, is otter cubs don't learn to sprain until they're approximately eight or nine months old. So quite often when you find a big piece of sprain, it's going to be from a cub because a cub's not sprinting in 15 or 16 different locations like its mum will be. So it just goes once. So a good indication that cubs are around is finding those big sprain. So now this would say we've got potentially three otters here and they're all sprainting. So that would say to me that the cubs are over eight, nine months old and reaching maturity at around a year. Uh, they might stay with mum for up to two years, potentially. Year and a half is not uncommon. 
Um, but this is really good and you can just tell from these basic field signs you can start to pull together a picture of what's actually going on with the otters. When you're looking for footprints, ideally you should be targeting soft substrate like mud, sand. If the water's recently dropped, this will leave a nice blank canvas. But we have to remember to, when we're looking for footprints that we need to keep ourselves safe. Please never enter the water looking for footprints, looking for sprains. Observe from a distance, use your binoculars. These can give you signs from quite a distance without even having to go there. Obviously, you'll never be surveying alone because you've got somebody with you. Carry a stick with you. If you're walking up and down banks, give yourself that third leg for a bit of stability on the bank. But there's no need to be able to enter the water so I went out earlier today and I found some footprints for you to look at. Also some footprints from other species, dogs, sheep, to give you a little bit of a comparison. It's mink. Um, there's otter there. See the toes? And pad. One, two, three, four, five toes and pad. Right next to the mink, you can clearly see the difference size toes also the the mink is a lot scratchier with the nails and see the otter is smoother because it hasn't had chance to sink in to get the nail so the nail is sits on top of the toe um, so it needs to sink right in dog much more rounded central pad and four pads above it and you can see the nails so that's classical circular and then just slightly ahead of that we've got some sheep just two there two little grooves because they're cloven hooves they have two so big party here last night so when you're out surveying looking for otter footprints and sprints don't forget to use the app here's how you use it this is how we record our otter sivings when we're in the field if you open the link it will take you to this page Open in browser, not on the app. Browser will then take you to the ArcGIS site. And here you'll be able to record what you found or what you haven't found. So have we found Otter Sign? Yes, we have. It then asks you if to allow it to share your location. This is critical because it saves you having to do it later and basically records you on a map there, your exact location so that you don't need to worry about doing it later. Now site code, you will have your site code. I'm going to use this one for now. And then my name, E. Jenkins. Date and time are already logged for you. Your location is logged. And what was it that we saw? Well, we found Sprint. And um, if you wish to, you can take a photo by pressing, by pressing the camera. Take photo and I can take a picture of where the sprint is. I'll use that and that will be added. And then all you have to do is press submit. Now the clever thing about this, if you haven't got reception when you're filling this in, you can submit it later when you're at home. You can also submit multiple records all at once. As part of our Coastal Volunteers project, we've got special WhatsApp groups for each area. Everyone in the group will be able to post any questions, photographs of signs they've found for us all to be able to see. And I can also pick up on these and give you a helping hand. Please don't forget that we've got other videos and films that we've made on our YouTube channel for South Wales Otter Trust. <laughs>